Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris. Thank you for being here. In this video, I'm going to fix this problem. It's been about two years since this started breaking on me. This Festool vacuum has seen better days, but as you can tell here, well, we fixed it. Ah, works well. Let me show you how I did it. Hey guys, first and foremost, I need to thank somebody. And if you're a new subscriber, you're gonna know who that person is. And that's James Hamilton over at the Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. Um, I got a major, major shout out from him on his weekend vlog um, this past week. Um, it's been about five, six days now since that video. The channel has grown um, around 11 to 12,000 subscribers more. And I thank each and every one of you as well. But James, thank you so much. The, the kind words and the way that you presented it, I just couldn't have, I couldn't have said it any better myself. And um, it was really heartwarming to, to see the comments coming in and to see the people who are now here and why they're here. And I, I just, it, it was crazy, pretty humbling stuff. All right, um, James, thank you so much. And speaking of James, I'm actually gonna link one of his videos down below. And the topics discussed in that video really pertain to this video too. Um, I'm gonna show you a video real quick here of something I'm working on. Uh, this project will be ready next week. This is me reorganizing all of my pneumatic and drill, um, battery powered drills, all in one station. I've got it started. I'm not gonna show you exactly what I'm working on. Uh, that video will be out next week. But this quick video this week, yeah, we fixed the problem. And I did use the CNC very briefly to help me with it. A couple measurements, a couple cuts, it was pretty easy. However, I do explain how you could do this process without one for sure. And I do most of it without one anyway. But check the video down below that Stumpy Nubs did about the integration of digital fabrication into most shops. And it's kind of going to be the wave of the future. And I'm sorry if you don't like it. <laughs> it's pretty true. Imagine all the handsaw guys when when the circular saw came out and said, that's not real woodworking, what are you doing? Oh, what are you, oh, you're plugging something in. Oh, you just ruined the sport. I know it's not a sport, it's a craft, but that's what I said. <laughs> I'm a nut, man. Anyway, the, <laughs> the maker movement is really where the CNCs are being integrated, not necessarily the woodworkers shops, right? I mean, those guys who think, oh, CNCs aren't real woodworking. Well, they kind of, they're kind of right. It's not real woodworking because woodworking is a whole totally other thing. Um, the same people that thought plugging in a power tool is not woodworking either a hundred years ago. I guess they've just been reincarnated to complain about the CNC. Either way, if you have a CNC and you know what it can do, you love it. And um, it's pretty eye-opening stuff. All right, let's get into this video. Man, this is taking forever. <laughs> so you can see here over on the CNC, I got a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Going to cut a big rectangle with an oval in the middle and then some rings that are going to be recessed just a little bit. Really the outside diameter is what's important. So right in the middle of these rings, I'm gonna go ahead and drill about a one quarter inch hole all the way through the material. And you can see in the last one, that piece kind of broke off. But really, like I said, the outer diameter is what really matters. That piece that broke, not that big a deal. So I need to transfer the holes through this piece of material. You're thinking, why don't you just drill through it? But I have to actually put a recess in there. So I'm gonna mark it first remove that piece and then put that 3 8 inch recess in there and that's going to basically encapsulate or recess the panhead screw, the proprietary Festool panhead screw that comes with the vacuum. So now that I know the depth I need, I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm going to go around all four corners, making sure I got the right countersink done for that screw. It's at this point now, I'm going to attach everything back. I'm just going to use a few squeeze clamps. And then I'm going to take that same drill bit we used in the beginning to transfer those holes all the way through the piece. So I'm going to show you the installation here. I'm going to get up underneath and show you those little columns that go into those recesses. Now, let's say you don't have a CNC and you want to get that exact measurement. Well, you could essentially cut your oval and then lay your piece of plywood down on this vacuum with a little bit of black paint or nail polish on those rings press it down and then you've got those rings transferred to your piece of wood and then you do the same process here as you see me doing. So the next step in the process is to make some sustainer storage that mimics how the sustainers used to fit on top of this vacuum. And for this, I'm using plywood again, this is half inch. I'm going to sand pieces down so they just barely fit inside some of these grooves. And I need a small groove cut in here and this is barely visible, but the blade of the table saw just took enough material away. I'm gonna attach these two pieces again with Starbond CA glue, of course. 
my favorite non-metal or wood tool in the shop for sure. And you can see there, that's what we got. Now that's the piece that I am trying to, well, build around. Essentially, I'm gonna use some CA glue again, place it in, and then we're gonna kind of give it a test and make sure that this is all gonna work. And you can see here, it locks it in place. Works out pretty well. Now we're gonna use the same process on the other side, making sure everything is kept flush to the side of the vacuum. Mark where it needs to go and I'm attach it with CA glue. You're thinking, wait a minute, Chris, a lot of weight's gonna be put on this, especially if you decide to pick these up. CA glue may or may not hold that entire strength. Well, you're probably right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back once I know that everything is nice and flush, and of course, reinforce everything with some wood screws. So to reinforce this joint, we're gonna drill down around an inch and a half with a relatively narrow drill bit. We're gonna countersink these two holes and then I get a lot of questions about what these screws are and where they are. I'm just gonna tell you, you can find them in your local big box store. Home Depot sells a brand called GRK that makes them and these are the Power Pro variety. I got these from Lowe's. So either one, you can definitely check them out. Go to your screw section and just look around. I'm sure you're gonna find them. So now it's time to make the pieces that are gonna lock the sustainer in place. Now the old plastic piece that broke had tabs where you could click them in and out to, for really easy access. Now I'm not gonna do that here. I'm going to just be okay with this being installed with one screw. No glue here, because I do wanna relieve these eventually in case I wanna take the sustainer away. But essentially, I used to keep them on this vacuum all the time, never really took them off. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. I'm just gonna use one screw and I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten just to kind of make sure I don't you know, strip anything out. And I'm gonna repeat this process on the other side as well. And now this thing is completely locked down by making things out of plywood, just kind of following your nose. I love projects like this and I hope you guys liked it as well. As you can see, it fits pretty well. And now it's time to install the actual vacuum head onto the base. And I kind of like the look of it, honestly. It's like futuristic modern. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, there you go. I, right now, in my arsenal of tools, I have three Festool tools. Uh, two of them are sanders, <laughs> so I technically have two. Um, either way, this worked really well. You could see here that you could just, uh, not that you would really need to pick it up all that much, but I've got three sustainers on here, and the functionality works pretty similar. Now, the two things that aren't the same is that there is not a big cavity in the middle um, for you to put like your hoses and your cords. Uh, not a big deal because I keep mine mounted in the shop. But the other reason that's pretty significant is that there isn't just a tab to go in and out. Uh, to remove the sustainer, I actually have to unscrew a couple screws and I'm fine with that. Could I have developed something? Yeah, I could have, but <clears throat> you know what? At this point, time is money and this is gonna be perfect for my situation and I hope you guys liked it. So stay tuned, next week we have a drill. Well, basically it's a drill station. And it's, yeah, there's a ton of those going on. But I haven't seen any incorporate in the same station pneumatic tool storage plus all the batteries for maybe their lawn equipment too. And I've done that as well. So that's coming up next week. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you're not already. And again, James, thank you for the shout out, brother. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. I'll see you on the next project. Again, my name's Chris, and y'all take care.